Hello everybody. So here we got tractor one and this is the John Deere 6130. I know, I know, it's a huge machine. Um, a lot of people down south in Montreal and Ottawa actually run just a full fleet of these machines and they're absolutely beautiful. There's nothing I could say bad about these machines. Um, it might look like it's overkill and looks a little bit large for what we're doing with it, but I promise you, you can fit this thing in some tight places. So this was actually our first big machine we ever purchased. And um, I must say it's personally one of my favorite, despite it being large, this machine rides just so smooth on the road. It's got so much power. The cab is very comfortable and it's it just, it looks like a beast and I just love it. The only thing I could complain about is how it doesn't have Nokian tires on it. However, it is more of a farm style tractor, okay? Now John Deere just recently released um, uh, the 6110 and 6120Ms with a whole new design where they sloped the nose, they tightened um, the width of the tractor by about a foot, they lowered the height by about a foot, and they just compacted the tractor, uh, making it not as long too. It's very, very um, shortened in length too. So I'm very excited to show you a review on that machine as well. I currently uh, own four of them. And I will be taking a review, an overview video on those uh, tractors very shortly here. But I wanted to touch base and give you guys the video of the John Deere 6130 first um, with the long nose before showing you the new reincarnated 110 model. Um, that is absolutely essential in my opinion for snow operations. Sad to say, I'll never buy another one of these big machines again um, from John Deere with the long nose. Um, it's just, it's really big. And now that they made the new 110s, it's not necessary. So um, I'm going to hop right into this, tell you a couple things that we fabricated on this machine to make it a snow tractor. Okay. Um, the one disadvantage, sorry, I got my, one of my employees, Brad, pulling out with the dump trailer there, but one of the biggest disadvantages on this uh, tractor is of course the agricultural tires. Um, they work, there's nothing wrong with them. Like I said, there's tons of guys down south who run this exact same setup, but they are slippery on the road and uh, you don't got traction like you do with snow tires. Like I always recommend get a set of Nokians if you can um, when you custom order these machines. But if they come with eggs, I mean, so be it. It is what it is. So we'll dive into it. Like I know I took in my last video, the Kubota L6060. You got your uh, gas cap holder here. We got our toolbox equipped with everything you need for when you're down. Now this tractor actually came loader ready. It's got the loader arms on the side, big grill on the front. You can see I got my loader right back there. So we use it um, for around the shop now and again to uh, you know lift things up with the forks, etc. So maybe I might actually hold on to this machine for a while, keep it around as a spare machine because you know what, it's got the loader arms. It's the only machine I have with loader arms and, and a loader. So who knows, maybe I might keep this thing around. It doesn't hurt and it's my favorite tractor. So um, what else makes the snow tractor? Like, I mean, you can't really fabricate these things too much or customize them like you can the, the 4Rs and the Kubota L6060s because they're, they're a powerhouse, right? So there's not much to do to them. No hydraulic accumulator in the back end because they could handle, they could handle weight bouncing around, no problem. So we don't have that. Um, of course, they come stock with mirrors. That is an upgrade. They got lights on the front. They got lights on the back. Okay, um, they come stock with fender uh, fender flares on the front. Now it does not have rear extended fender flares. It does get a little bit of overspray on the cab, this big machine, but not too much to really complain about. So, I mean, in the end of the day, you could purchase one of these machines and you hook up a blower and you're pretty much ready to go. Besides the little 1% of, um, you know, putting like the gas cap holder on, um, loading up your toolbox and uh, getting a CB radio installed and maybe mounting a shovel onto your blower. Like there's not a whole lot to do. You could grab one of these and just go. Where the four R's and the fives, if you don't get them custom ordered, you're gonna have to do a little bit of work uh, to them, right? So, I mean, besides that, as you could tell, 
like I was saying, this thing's just absolutely huge and just gorgeous. Um, now, of course, we're all familiar with the Norman Hybrid. Uh, this is the 92 inch model. So of course, a foot larger than the, the last two blowers I was showing you um, in my overview of the John Deere 4066R and the Kubota L6060. So that's the 92 inch model, exact same thing, no difference, just bigger chute, bigger barrel, bigger auger, just pretty much a bigger blower. That's the only thing that I could say different about it. Now I'm gonna hop in the machine here and give you a little bit of a rundown inside the cab of what's going on. While I'm noticing it, nice little feature that it has, if you blow a pin and you need to lift your blower up and down, you could use these buttons here. And sometimes that does come in handy. Def, of course. You got three steps to come up to this beast. You got your buddy seat if you're doing any training or maybe you want to take your girlfriend out for a ride, bring her through the route. Got your Ram phone mount here. Got your Ram tablet mount here, okay? Um, you got your brake, you got your clutch. Of course, you got your center wheel and dash. I'm gonna lower this for you, okay? You got your forward. You got your reverse signals, horn, doesn't got too mean of a horn on it, your windshield wipers, and then of course your dash there, a couple different functions on there, but it's pretty basic. You got your four ways, your running lights, you got your mirror, you got your shade when the sun comes out, and then of course you got your cluster with controls. So yes, I know, looks a little bit complicating, but it's pretty straightforward. I apologize, I got caught off in the last clip I was taking. So here's all the controls in the 6130M, and I'm gonna explain to you thoroughly how I operate this machine and what these controls do, etc. So you got your shifter right here, uh, we're in park currently. You got neutral that slides from here to here. And you got range A, B, C, D, E, F. A being your lowest range and F being your highest range. So A, you go slow. F, you go fast. Um, now, when you're driving on the road, you're going to want to be an F. Um, and then you have four gears per range. So you got four gears on A, B, C, D, and E, and F, right? So you could uh, be in um, F1, and then you shift up to F2 if you want to go faster, and then shift up to F3 if you want to go faster, and then all the way to 4. And then, of course, you're going to want to shift down as you uh, decelerate uh, when you're coming to a stop sign or pulling into a driveway, etc. So um when i run this machine on the road obviously i'm always in f and i shift through the gears to get up to road speed and when i'm in driveways i'm always in the gear c half throttle like i have it so um for normal snow events for a bit heavier snow events you can put three quarters throttle and then for those big 40 centimeter dumps that we get up here in sault ste marie uh you want to you want to put it full throttle and it'll absolutely annihilate the snow so yeah like i was saying you want to be in c uh one c2 c3 c4 max when you're doing driveways and you're going to want to be half throttle and you know use your judgment uh increase the throttle depending on how much snow there is so yeah don't leave c guys that's the best gear to be in some people even like b but uh once you get the hang of it c is the best gear to be in um when you're when you're blowing snow in driveways absolutely now what i do when i'm in uh, a, a driveway blowing snow of course i'm only using the clutch and i'm only using the brake i don't use the throttle when i'm in reverse or pulling forward i just use the clutch and brake so when i want to of course gain speed reversing or pulling forward while i'm blowing snow i let the clutch out and that'll gain me speed okay now if i want to decrease my speed i'll put the clutch in and then i'll hammer the brake like just when you're getting close to a garage or if you're getting close to um say for example a car or anything along those lines just make sure you're on the clutch and the brake you don't use your throttle um it is a preference you can but i don't i don't teach my employees to we use the power right here um on uh the, the throttle the hand throttle and then we only use the pedal throttle when we're driving from house to house okay now of course this is um the controls for your three-point hitch this moves your blower up and down i'll turn the machine on here to show you
There's a dash for you there. Right now I got it running at half throttle. So half throttle is gonna be gonna be about 1500 there. Uh, that'll be about half throttle there. And you wanna put it all the way up to say 1800, 1900, 2000 for three quarters like that. And then full throttle, bring you about 2250. Anyways, besides the point, showing you the blower in the back here. This is controls to lift it up. Up, down, like so. And it actually has a dampener too. So if you're driving on the road, you could lock it in like so. And it locks it locks your uh, blower on the back of the three-point hitch and, and, and uh, a shock, I guess, turns on in, in your rear end. And it kind of uh, dampens and absorbs um, the weight of the blower bouncing up and down on your three-point hitch, kind of makes for a smoother ride. So I, so I know, I've heard this from my John Deere dealership. I'm not too knowledge on how it works, but when I use it, it, it definitely helps. Uh, so when I'm out on the road and I want a bit of a smoother ride, when that blower is bouncing up and down, I'll put this on and that's about it. Put the blower back down. Here's your PTO. And I open up the cab here, the window, turn on your PTO. And then I'm gonna increase the throttle here. Now that's 130 horsepower for you right there. Absolute beast. Got your shoe controls here. PTO off. That's it. Now, um, what I, like I was just showing you, we do have our shoe controls here. And what we did is we, we bolted in a bolt with a washer and a wing nut here so that we wouldn't over excel the movement of the chute. So what happens is um, when I was using this machine last year, and this goes for all our machines with uh, the manual levers in them. When you go like this and you apply too much pressure, it locks it. Okay, I'll show you what happens. Say for example, you're doing a driveway and you're moving the controls and you end up locking it. So it, it just did that with my hand off it, right? So we applied this little bolt-on system with a wig nut so that you can't have that ever happen. It doesn't lock. It could never lock. So great feature. I recommend that everyone does that in uh, their machines with uh, the manual levers as uh, it'll avoid you from, you know, hitting a car or a house with snow because say for example you apply too much pressure you'll make that control stick and then you'll end up blowing some snow at a house or something or hitting a car or something right something you don't want to end up doing okay so that's the rundown there for uh, the controls now of course you got your basic stuff all your heat etc you got all your lamps for the back windshield wiper uh, four-wheel drive diff lock so you can listen to the radio up here plug your aux in here and then you got your nice uh, radio system here that we all communicate on, mandatory. Mitchell, this is Stefano, do you copy? Okay, and uh, that's pretty much it for all the controls in the 6130. You got the nice side windows here. And the big machine, which I love. You got the mirror, which you want. And that's about everything for the 6130. Pretty basic machine. Uh, not a lot of crazy gadgets and controls on it. But this is by far my favorite tractor. And uh, I wish it was just a little bit smaller. But that's why I'm going to show you the new 6110M and what John Deere has done with that. So please stay tuned for the next overview, guys as I'll be showing you the 110 through and through and why it is now the ultimate snow tractor when you are buying a big machine. Stay tuned, Stefano, out. Oh.